Okay, we are live, I believe. I hope we're live. That would be good if we were. Let me click on the thing there. Oh, there's an ad for a thing. I believe I am ready for the big time. I see Sidero. Hey, Sidero. I will send out the tweet. Can I hear myself? Okay, that is me. Okay, sorry. I like to do. I like to be. I like to be thorough there. Anyway, yes, we are live. Thank you, Sidero. Hello, El Vasquez, Nathaniel Foga, Sinram. Sinram got to watch it for the first time in like. I don't. I forget, but congrats to Sinram on getting to watch it. I don't know if you want me saying that to everyone, but congrats. I, Jordan Salafala, Ramsey the artist. I saw Austin in there. If I didn't say hi to Austin, Ace the Wind Rider. Ace the Wind Rider's links are in the description. Check those out, everybody. I don't think I'll be doing. We'll be right back this time, but we'll see. Luis, I'm listening with my girlfriend. Hello to Luis's Luis, 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 whichever's girlfriend. Oh, oh, sh sh <laughs> saw my wine class and ran. How bad you? Okay, show. Sure. All right, all right, all right. First, I wanna. I want to say, oh, we're hot, hot in the kitchen tonight. Hot in the kitchen tonight. I do have, this is a champagne glass because I thought, which I should have cleaned better. But since Austin did the first one, um, AK Master, by the way, cornbread, all that. We are hot in the kitchen. I'm going to do this. Let me get the monitor out because I want you to be able to see the Red Bull in the wine glass. Let's, I'm doing the classic. We do the classic for the Oscars. We do I hope you can see with this angle. I did. I am wearing the tux. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Here, let's do the inaugural. Just get that pour in there. Oh, yeah. Okay, I think there's some more. We'll put some more in later. I don't want to be too. But cheers to you. <laughs> Look at this shot. <laughs> cheers to you, Austin. Mm. There we go. Oscar season is officially over. <laughs> Thank you, Dan. Thank you. Um, so yes, every super chat tonight will uh, will be. Um, and let me heart that. Will be um, with this nice glass here, which I hope. Can you see? Sorry, it's a little. It's a little different. It's a little different on this. Oh, you can't see it. Okay. Um, also. Uh, but yeah, I watched the Oscars. We were just talking about the Oscars. I do. I'm not sure. Uh, I cough. I had a cough with me. Oh man, they kept that. That sucks. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I scared the crap out of you. Um, that sucks. I shouldn't have recorded that. Okay, I will have to edit that later. Um, that's annoying. Anyway, uh. Nobody. Who else would? Nobody would drink Red Bull or Ship Pagos. Uh, I feel bad that that cough is in there. Anyway, um, was it a great pour? I don't know. But I, I appreciate your confidence in me. Hello, Taco Master as well. Um, yes, we're just talking about the Oscars. I'm not sure when and if I'll do a new stream later in the week. I'll let you know about all of that. Um, but yes, we're just going to talk about the Oscars uh, before we do. The only real announcement I have is I have added on to uh, my channel, which for some reason I didn't uh, turn on, uh, was the super, uh, super thanks. So if you ever can never make it to a show during, uh, to do a uh, super chat during the show and of all is one and two and stuff like that, if you do a super thanks. I will then in the live stream after that, We'll read off your name and give you a chug of whichever energy drink I'm doing. So if you're ever uh, wanted to be a part of it and do that or just support the channel, that option is now there. I don't know why I didn't have it turned on, but now I do. Anyway, um, <laughs> nothing else. Let's just get to the main part and we'll just talk about the Oscars. Then we'll do questions and it's just going to be like an hour stream and then it'll be done. That's basically what we're doing here. Just Oscars and then questions and that's it. Uh, did I talk about Akira? It's like the movie? Yes. I did it. I talked about the movie. I did a thing on the year it came out. I did a song. Maybe something else. I don't know. <laughs> Look it up. I've done some stuff. Anyway, 
this and everything I do is supported by you, the fans, uh, either through um, Super Chats during the show or through my Patreon, uh, where you have all sorts of uh, cool exclusive things like the extra Jodie Foster uh, fact about David Fincher's The Game. Uh, there's going to be a uh, uh, um, uh, <laughs> the movie review vote uh, winner's list uh, video will be out tomorrow, I hope. And uh, all sorts of stuff like postcards and uh, cool exclusives as well as it helps me, you know, feed my family, help keep paying the bills and all sorts of stuff like that. Oh, Akira Torikama, Toriyama. I, okay, well, when you say Akira, that's not where my mind... Do you, you understand the confusion there? I think that's a little... Anyway, I apologize for misunderstanding, but I think... Anyway, uh, sorry. Um, but yeah, uh, it helps me do the show if you're financially able to do so. I will drink down some Red Bull, uh, or whichever Red Bull in this case, in your honor. And it also gives me energy to keep doing the show, because I've had a long day. And I hurt my arm a little, but I think I'm okay. Um, but anyway... Uh, yes, if you're financially able to do so, if not, or want to give a super chat or the Patreon, but if you, or a super thanks for watching later through any video, apparently, but, uh, if you can't do that, just watching and watching the video is cool, liking and subscribing. That way, you know, when I'm going to do streams, you get throwback videos, all sorts of cool stuff in your feed from me and it helps support the show. Um, as well as uh, you should join the Discord. It has all sorts of cool stuff. I talk about what I'm going to talk about on the streams uh, that day. Uh, or I ask what I'm going to talk about in general. There's the uh, License Playing Card uh, channel. This is These are all out of sorts. These are the worst License Playing Cards ever. Um, and then um, uh, there's uh, Movie Watches. I don't know if they know this early what they're going to watch this weekend. Uh, but the, it's a great community, so if you like everyone in the, the chat right here, it's a good place to go. Oh, hello, Sun Solaris, by the way. Um, and, yeah, I think, the, oh, there's also, I have a TikTok, Twitter, Instagram, all that fun stuff. Tumblr, it's all in the description down below if you'd like to follow it. But, let's get into the Oscars. Whoa, we have a super, another super chat from Austin, who says, you want creamy goodness? Um, you're, say, hello to Oppenheimer. Blend Attica, Hua, Barbie, <laughs> Little This Holdover Trial is out of sight. They pulled me back in with poor things, too. I like that. I like that. I like that. Cheers to you, Austin. That was good. That took some... That took some... That that was creative. You, Austin deserves some credit for that. Cheers to you. If someone can get Al Pacino to read that, cheers to you. All right, so... um, I watched the Oscars with, um, beginning with my kids... They obviously couldn't watch it the whole way. Um, we all wore suits, if you check out my Instagram. Or saw the pictures on Twitter and stuff. They looked very cute. My sister-in-law deserves a credit for Oscar suit. That is not something I actually planned, but he looks really cute. He looks really cute. Um, but anyway, um, that was fun, but it kind of highlighted to me how it's not really... Uh, uh, I don't know. I think the problem with this Oscars is it's good at some things, but it wasn't good at being all audience. And I wish it had been more concerned with that in getting people into movies, which I think um, they kind of play an important role in that. And that would have been nice. I also think uh, Jimmy Kimmel, it was probably his worst performance as host. And I've never liked him as host. So it was like pretty egregious. Like he was out and out. Oh, um, I would say abnormally bad. Like he was pretty bad. He didn't make me laugh. He did the movies are too long joke, which is obnoxious. It's like, why are you here? If you don't like movies, I fucking get that you are forced to by ABC, but it's like Colbert or I'm always going to say Amber Ruffin, but I, I think she's probably not big of a name enough to, unfortunately, but like, like if Colbert would not have made, or if he made a movies too long joke, I would have grown, but his charisma would have worked it. It's like, I don't, I don't think those, and it's like, yeah, Killers of the Flower Moon, I did like plan a certain way, because it is a long movie, but at the same time, I'm just like, I don't fucking care. Like, shut the fuck, like, I don't want to hear about movies being too long again. He did make, I didn't really hear the um, movies are for animated movies for kids thing, which I'm sure he said, um, I was just sort of like, whatever with that one. Um, I don't actually think that, uh, I don't, I don't know. It's just like nothing he said was very funny. 
He's not a very good host. I don't think he's really good at emceeing. I get he got to come back because of the post slap stuff and stuff, but he's just like, like get a new, just stop it with him. Mulaney was hilarious during the best sound thing. It was like one of the only times I was really like laughing and having a good time. A lot of the presenters were better, things like that. The overall show I thought had some really good strong points, but overall was not went on too long was not really concerned with being funny, uh, hyped up Barbie way more than it gave Barbie awards. So it did feel like, I think there's a quote from like Eminem. Um, I think he said like with the Grammys or something. I've heard this from other celebrities, like agents talk about this a lot. Um, why you certainly started, you see a celebrity and there are a ton of award shows and then they're just like not there anymore. And I think Eminem's the only one who's really talked about it. And he was like, Basically, with the Grammys, he's like, don't fucking call me to be on your award show. Don't ever fucking call me in a million years. I'm done with this shit because he's bringing up, he was like, I don't mind losing, but it annoys me to lose to, like, basically, like, I think he lost to, like, Nora Jones and Steely Dan and, like, people who aren't necessarily, like, huge and relevant. And, like, regardless of both those albums are good that beat him and stuff, but I think his point overall is, like, you get these celebrities there to get beaten by someone who like, we're only going to hear about during the award show and you use them to hype up the award show and then you don't give them awards. And it's like kind of bullshit. And I don't, I agree. I actually agree with him. Even if I'm like, I don't necessarily think like you should, they should always give it to like the biggest person in the world, but it's like, but at a certain point, if you're, they're going to use like your, movie or your album or whatever predominantly to sell something and then like oh what do we get and they're like oh no jack shit and you're like well what i had to spend money and time and all this and what and so like i get a little more why they are so mad about it but um so so i can understand like that's why like you saw maybe 10 years ago you saw certain people the oscars and you don't see them anymore is like a long running thing because they're like i have to find a dress i have to find a shirt all this stuff and they don't want to. So um, I was thinking about that with Barbie. Uh, but uh, there are certain moments I liked. Um, I the, the the thing with all the um, the actors introducing each of the nominees, I, I'm the best supporting actress one was really good. Um, where Jamie Lee Curtis was introducing Jodie Foster, and it's like, oh right, they were seventies teen actresses. They have a connection. That's interesting. Um, you had uh, America Ferrer introduced by Rita Moreno, not just because she sang American West Side Story, because she was the first like Latino uh, actor I think ever for a little, for a long time to win uh, an Oscar at Best Supporting Actress, uh, introducing America Ferrer, who's also uh, Latina. So it was like that was actually really cool. Um, and there were in Best the first one, I thought they did a great job, but I thought the problem with it ultimately is like don't just do winners because you got a lot of awkward ones and like the nick cage one really worked with paul giamani and there are certain ones that worked but there are a lot where they were like uh <laughs> like uh yeah you and stuff and like i wish they just picked people who we remember from being in movies with them like if they had that like lily gladstone if they had had kristen stewart who was in a um uh uh a kelly reichard movie a certain women with her like, that would have been really cool. And Kristen Stewart's, like, a big famous person. I'm not saying don't get a big famous person. Get a big famous person who's connected to them. And then we as the audience. And then people be like, oh, what's this movie they're in together? Oh, that's interesting. And there'd be more to talk about. Uh, but it just didn't... I don't know. Didn't really... Did, I, I don't know if it worked if you don't do that. And I also think, like, part of the Oscars is you show these clips... And you get people to see these movies they otherwise wouldn't. And without the clips as much, like, are people, are the general public going to see those movies as much? I always wonder if that costs them when they do something like that. I don't know the stats. Maybe I'm fucking wrong about that. But, um, you know, certain things, like John Mulaney was probably one of the best parts. Uh, the John Cena thing was, I don't know if it was that funny or anything, but it was, I, I give him a... Uh, props for doing it apparently he had to, they had like a standards and practices thing and he had like he, he had something covering his butt behind him and he could only move certain ways and the camera couldn't catch certain things 
Um, but it was like funny and it showed me like maybe John Cena should be doing more comedies. I didn't see Ricky Stenicky, which I've heard more about since he did that. And I was like, part of the Oscars I truly believe is about like promoting film and movies. And the fact that this Amazon prime movie that's been out all weekend, I heard, uh, Jack shit about until he did that. Um, I was kind of like, well, I think it worked actually. I think, th- I think that worked, man. I don't know. Um, but it was like a funny bit. Um, I, Ryan Gosling, I think is the star of that Oscars. Uh, if you saw what the, I'm just Ken, they should have done it earlier. Sophie wanted to st- I'm going to talk about the winners. I'm just sort of doing the overall thing. Uh, wanted to stay up and she couldn't, but I did, she did get to see Godzilla win. And that was, that was cool. Um, I'll talk more about that in a second, but uh, Ryan Gosling, even his thing with Emily Blunt, it wasn't like the most hilarious, but at least they had good timing and was entertaining and stuff. I wish they had focused more on let's, let's like get the normies into stuff. And same with like the Al Pacino thing. They salute the Godfather so many times. If they salute Godfather three though, I'm like, just guys, please don't. Just Godfather 2, sure. Godfather 1 and 2, classic movies, no problem here. I still recommend, like, people get mad. They're always like, oh, don't uh, recommend The Godfather. It's such a cliche. But I'm like, you should, should you should still see them. They're still great movies, right? But at the same time, it's like, you've done it a lot. And, like, I actually think if I was going to do Who Does Best Picture, I would pick people who are from the 80s. Like, I would get Michael J. Fox and Christopher Lloyd or... Um, actually Tom Cruise or Keanu Reeves or, um, uh, you know, or Sam Neill and Laura Dern, like somebody would be like, Oh, cool. They're here. And instead it's like, how many times has Al Pacino been there? It's like, doesn't it really, <laughs> didn't feel that special. I was like, I we, at first I was like, Oh, it's Godfather too. Oh, I mean, okay. We did the Godfather tribute and De Niro's there. And it's like, I don't know, like get somebody or have Nicholson come back like Nicholson. Hey, Nicholson's here. You know, it's like that would have been cool. But like, I feel like unless you're getting somebody like really tremendous, like get there's so many actors from the 80s who like would be cool. Dick Tracy. (laughs) I forgot. I think he was nominated for Dick Tracy, I believe. Wasn't Al Pacino actually nominated for Dick Tracy? Cheers to you, Austin. Thank you for your generosity. I think he was, but um. All right, so the um oh and the the stunts thing. I guess that's been a, a a bit controversial because everyone wants there to be a stunts award and there is not a stunts award. Um, and then this tribute to stunts was David Leach, who if there's any, I guess he's in, just in charge of the action genre. Let slip uh, earlier, but he like didn't um. I just didn't, uh, I don't know. It was, it played weird because it's like, I think everyone were like, are they going to announce best stunts? They're like, nope, stunts are cool though. And you're like, I don't, sure. I mean, (laughs) it just played a little empty. It was kind of neat. I actually like montages, but, um, oh, and Sinran brings up, I love the part where they play the Beatles, Beetlejuice theme with Michael Keaton and Catherine O'Hara. Cheers to you, Sinran. I like that too. I also liked, um, the Batman segment which was so much fun uh, having, although it was weird, like they bring up DeVito and Arnold Schwarzenegger and they go, there's Batman. And I was like, Arnold, that was not your Batman. George Clooney's got to be in the room somewhere. Come on, man. Um, Although I have noticed, I would like to know the refer, the what Batman movies reference the most of the Oscars. And part of me thinks it might be Batman and Robin, but cheers. (laughs) I did like the Beetlejuice thing and Catherine O'Hara deserves more flair. She's great. Um, But thank you for the super chat. And for reminding me, I forgot to talk about the Batman thing. Um, But I like that. Also, I learned that apparently they, that was not the Beetlejuice thing. If you watch it, he was wearing, I'll get you, uh, Nathaniel, I'm sorry. Um, The Beetlejuice part, when he comes out, his tux was different. They actually put something on him to make him look more Bruce Wayne-y because they had planned it out obviously but DeVito I did like that I think I tweeted I've actually never seen twins and then they don't do twins which is funny um the theater focus says it was neat seeing two of the stars with Lito Battle Angel coincidentally be there to present best supporting actor nominees you know what I noticed you were saying that earlier in the discord I like your I like, you, you are right you are I think you're the only one who brought up the Alita Battle Angel connection to theater um all right what I did, I did actually take notes. Are the, am I am I missing anything from the show? 
I'm, I'm kind of... Sp- oh, okay. So the only other thing... Two things that are not part of winners is the immemorium thing was real horrible. Like I couldn't see what was going on. So I don't even want to get mad at them for uh, not including people because, uh, uh, when, uh, when I, when, when, uh, when I watched, uh, because you couldn't see anything. Like I, I saw someone play it other in clips and another video and I went like, oh, they did William Freakin? Like, I didn't even recognize it because they had it like so far behind these dancers. And it's like, you just cut to the video. You don't just do, I couldn't see what was going on. So people mentioned Sinead O'Connor was in there. I, I have no clue. So I'm actually not upset because I don't know what happened. So maybe that was the strategy. Maybe if we confuse them enough, they'll just assume we said everyone, which is a, a strategy, I guess. But it was, it was, it was bad. It was one of the worst in memoriams i've ever seen to be honest like i thought that was pretty horrible um so now what i'm about to say is slightly controversial and i want i want the chat to be ready for this i'm sorry to say this but there are rumors and very substantial rumors that that was not messy at the oscars that was a dog that looked like messy they got a dog that looked like messy and they tricked us i don't i couldn't get a confirmation i heard that from many people the night of but yeah that's what i'm hearing that's what i've heard i just wanted to tell you i want to be honest with you guys that it might not have been the messy it might have been a messy and i just um i i i i didn't want to tell you guys i didn't want to tell you you know i you know i i don't know but who knows? And I've also heard that Messi wasn't even there and they just shot footage of Messi and put him in later. Hello, big mini Italian salient. Um, so look, I don't know what's the truth anymore. I just know a Messi was there. Was it the Messi? It looked close enough to me, but I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, let's move on to the actual winners. I think, I think the category you all want me to talk about is animated feature uh i am embarrassed that this started with a cough off to youtube editor i thought i anyway you know what i try let's i think that i think that should be in my channel description i try my best guys i don't know all right um so best animated feature was this a surprise i don't think it was but it was sort of a surprise i guess um, cause a lot of people, it seemed to be as much as it was a year of the whole campaign was between the boy and the heron and across the spider verse. Most people assumed towards the end that across the spider verse was just going to win and boy and the heron was not going to win. And then it came out that, or boy and the heron just won. That's basically what happened. Now, I think one of the things that really changed this for people is this first off this is the only the second time a traditionally animated film has won this category i think that has more to do with the the times that this category existed in than saying too much about traditional animation uh but i also think people look at this and um you know it was like do you want miyazaki to have two oscars potentially never get another one or have Spider-Verse have two, possibly three? And I think they kind of looked at it and went, well, let's do Hayao Miyazaki. I also think there's so much love for him. Like, if you ever see a Disney behind-the-scenes thing, every animator at their desk has some different tchotchke from a Studio Ghibli thing. So I think, like, people who cared about this award all nominated for The Boy and the Heron. I do think Across the Spider-Verse is a better film, but I'm like, should Miyazaki have multiple Oscars? Yes, he should, you know? I, do, I have seen people get really upset about Across the Spider-Verse, but I think Across the Spider-Verse should have gotten a Best Picture nomination, uh, probably a Best song, Original Score. It should have gotten a little more love. But people said that about Into the Spider-Verse. Seems like every Oscars, they're always like, you know, we should have done more of it, and then they don't. Um, I didn't think it was that big of a deal. I know a lot of people insinuated Miyazaki wasn't there because of pal- the issue of Palestine stuff. At the time that the first... So when Spirit Away happened, I was aware he didn't go because of the Iraq War. 
when it happened. That's my memory of it. A lot of people said he said that later. I don't know. Uh, it's been like 20 years, so I could be wrong about that little fact. But to my, I think he's just 80 and didn't want to go. He doesn't actually like going to shit. So I, I, assu- I never thought he was going to do that. But I think like they're both really important films. I do think like Boy and the Heron is like a really messy, odd Miyazaki film. It's not like what you're going to think of for him. But he's still Hayao Miyazaki. He's so influential in terms of film and animation. It's not like the worst thing ever that uh this one and one second because i see a water situation hold on hold on okay there's like a bit of water that spilled and i was seeing it about to anyway it doesn't matter um so next up uh we're just going to go down and go through it and i'll talk about each of the winners and things like that um, the big thing and the next big one, and they're less fun big ones, but I will say, sorry, uh, best visual effects going to Godzilla minus one. This was really incredible and continued. What I all told you is that Neil Corbolt is, uh, would be the biggest loser of the night losing three Oscars. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> one go really, really huge loss. I hope. Uh, you know, I know he's a complete and utter loser for winning, losing three Oscars at once, but, um, Godzilla, sorry, but, um, it really, I think, uh, Godzilla, um, deserved to win. It had the best story, um, in terms of its visual effects. Although a lot of people have brought up that, that, that's, it's not that great of a story when you consider that they were probably underpaid, but, um, we're going to ignore that. That's a different film industry underpaying their visual effects artists. So we're going to be like, Oh, wonderful. Um, however, I do think it's like incredibly impressive how they used it, how they used, uh, that storytelling wise, how, um, the, the parts that didn't have visual effects were compelling, I think also helped to that. Um, but I do think they're really great visual effects. And also, I also think, um, that this is the second great Godzilla movie in a row from Toho. Like, I think that actually helped as well. No one's really bringing that up, but like, I know it won at the Japanese, uh, Oscars as well as Shin Godzilla and both were the first to do that in terms of Godzilla movies, but I think warranted. And I think both have a lot to say about modern times. I think that's kind of what helped it is because it was its only nomination. I believe it's the first time a foreign film ever won in that category. The creator, I noticed there was like suddenly a surge of like the creator should have won. I don't think the creator, I think it was between the creator and Godzilla, but I think like the thing that helped Godzilla is like the creator's like not a good movie, (laughs) you know, it's like very pretty to look at and it, it shouldn't, the story actually should not affect visual effects, but it does. And the story of it and it being the only Godzilla movie, but at the same time, what the creator did in visual effects was like the main thing you were talking about was the technical aspects of that film. So I wasn't like against that. And I sort of like, I know it won some visual effects awards and stuff and it should have. And, uh, they did a great job with that. But I I think, I think Godzilla minus one, you know, and it was cool. Like seeing them come up with the Godzilla things and, uh, Godzilla toys and have the Godzilla shoes and like be excited and like, uh, the, the orchestra playing the Godzilla theme. And like, I think it was like nice seeing that part of cinema, honored is like really cool part of what i liked about oscars last night is like there was a bunch of people who i grew up understanding cinema uh when i was a kid in the 90s and as i grew up and started liking movies three of them were godzilla jonathan glazer and wes anderson all one and like that was really cool and all three well two were there and well and hayo hayo miyazaki i'm sorry hayo miyazaki that was incredible like seriously that's really cool like that's really cool actually that they won. So, uh, okay. Uh, we have a, from, we have a super chat from Dan. He said, Godzilla isn't, is now an Oscar winning cinematic icon. It doesn't get better than this. You're right. Cheers to you for your third, also your third super chat, I guess. I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> cheers to you, Dan. Thank you. It is true. You know what? Dan said it before it is the best time to be into Godzilla. And I fucking agree with you. Somebody said that the next Godzilla vs. Kong trailer should say Oscar winner Godzilla versus Oscar winner Kong. I don't remember what Kong's won an Oscar for. I think it won a special one for the original. I, I haven't looked up what Kong won, but I would love Oscar winner. Even John Carpenter was happy. 
they made John Carpenter happy. I mean, that is like not easy, actually. That's incredible. They should they should be happy just for that. Anyway, cheers to you, Dan. I'm happy Wes won <laughs> Astro City still a bad movie. Well, I like I like your consistency, Austin. Cheers to you. Um well, yeah, I think that was a cool thing. It was fun watching Sophie get up and cheer for Godzilla. And it was cool seeing Godzilla. You know, it deserves it. It deserves it. And it was the visual effects you were talking about. Because it did a good job. And I think it improved even from Shin Godzilla. Right? And Shin Godzilla was cool too. Anyway. Um, so I think uh, best film editing was only the third time a woman has actually won for film editing with uh, Jennifer Lame. That is her name. I'm not making fun of her. Um, but uh, she also direct, uh, edited Hereditary Manchester by the Sea. She's a very accomplished editor. I think that was great. Uh, for her, I, I don't know. Of the ones, I probably... I don't know. I probably would have gone with Thelma Shoemaker because I, I like her a lot and stuff. I was thinking when I was a kid, because my sister was here, she asked me, like, what was the first Oscars? And I think I said 99, but I actually think my first one... What, what I... In my head, I said, I I thought the 2000 one, but I think the 98 one was my first, or the one that honored the 98 Oscar, the 98 movies was the first one. Because so I remember that moment where they were announcing Best Picture and all the Saving Private Ryan people were standing up and they went, Shakespeare in Love, and they're like, oh, fuck, why did we do that? Um, but uh, <laughs> um, uh, but in that, I, I literally remember the year before, and my dad wouldn't let me stay up, and before they were like, and a special montage edited by Martin Scorsese at Thelma Schumacher. I was like, Dad, let me stay you up for this. He was like, no, go to bed. It was like, oh, and I, st I don't think I still, I don't think, I, I don't think I've actually gone back and watched it. I think it was the 90s. So I might be wrong, but I remember there was one 90s one where they hyped up Scorsese edited a montage. And I was like, come on. <laughs> like, that was my, that was the thing I wanted to see. Uh, best costume design and best production design. Uh, poor things really cleaned up in technical with makeup, costume design, and production design. I was a little disappointed um, Barbie didn't win one of those. I thought it was sort of warranted. You could have just given Barbie another thing. I've, In all fairness, I have not seen poor things, although I've seen so many pictures and the trailer so many times. I feel like I can at least have a, a minuscule amount of an opinion on at least those. Uh, makeup, I sort of agree with, although everyone thought Maestro was going to at least get that. Um, costume design... I guess, but I think Barbie was sort of like a unique thing. And like, when are you going to get that again? And production design say, I thought one would go to poor things. One would go to Barbie, but they, uh, uh, Oh, 10 years from Rayman and Rayman, uh, Barry Levinson from Baltimore. So only Baltimore director, I believe to win best director. Um, anyway, I will see poor things and probably review the, uh, let's see, uh, best cinematography. I really am happy that Hoyt von Hoytema won. I actually really like Hoyt von Hoytema. He directed, Let, he did the c cinematography for Let the Right One In, which is gorgeous, as well as the other, um, I forget, was it Thomas Alfredson, that director who did that, and uh, Tinker Taylor, Soldier Spy, both amazingly well shot. And then he did The Snowman. Now we never hear about him. But <laughs> there's a time where he was, I really like Hoyt von Hoytema, that even though Spectre, not a good movie, that opening sequence, really amazing, very well done, very well shot. He's a great DP. He's really been looked on as the next great DP uh, of our era. And I he, actually, a few people after he won was like, we've under nom they've under nominated him, which you never hear about. And then he was like pro celluloid. That was actually really cool. Um, okay. So uh, let's, okay. So best sound. I'm actually really happy that zone of interest won. Um, I think the sound in that I've seen essays been written about, it. I've seen people who work in post-production actually talk about how moving and amazing it is that it won that uh, the sound mix in that. Um, I think it is probably, but because if you don't know of zone of interest is basically about a house that's right next to Auschwitz's real house. You can constantly hear the concentration yet, but you don't see it. And so like so much of that was, uh, about the sound. And I thought like, that's, a very smart like technical thing and the academy is like kind of dumb so i thought like they'll just go for oppenheimer because explosions but they went what if we don't what if we not vote for explosions 
And then their choices were my strong zone of interest lingo, but we we sort of like fucking with Bradley Cooper, so so zone of interest. Um, I I think that was probably one of the more smarter wins of the night. It was one of the more incredible ones. I think uh, a couple of people brought up that sound the sound's gone to better people since it's been one category. I think zone of interest would have won both, or they would have split between that and Oppenheimer, probably something like that. But um, I still think it deserved uh, it deserved that win. I'm I'm actually really happy for that win i saw a tweet that i will retweet later that said um uh man i really wanted to uh, like i can't wait to watch zone of interest at home on streaming i can't explain it but there was this guy just screaming outside the theater the whole time like all these people talking outside while i was trying to watch the movie pretty funny i best zone of interest joke i've ever heard i think um but no i thought that was really cool i'm just going off the order of wikipedia uh, well, you know what? We're in zone of interest, and uh, I want to talk about the international feature. Um, Jonathan Glazer won, and um, was the only one. I thought there'd be two things that happened that night. One, we'd hear shit on David Zaslav, which the industry seems to not want to. Which is like, what the fuck? Like, why? Why do you love David Zaslav? And the second one is uh, talk about Palestine. Um, and the only one who really did was Jonathan Glazer, the director of Zone of Interest, when he won for Best International Feature. Uh, I not I didn't check right before, but I know his speech was not uploaded to YouTube like the rest of the... It, maybe it has since, and if anyone wants to correct me in the chat, please do. Um, when it was that night, I thought, look, YouTube processing can sometimes fuck you over. So I was like, I'll give them the benefit of the doubt until tomorrow. But when it wasn't up this morning i was like okay well they're obvious there's something something's wrong obviously <laughs> like they're doing something um but people noticed it pretty right away that they were obviously not happy when he's talking about gaza and stuff like that i applaud jonathan glazer for basically taking the subtext of that movie and making it text in that case because i think in a sense it needed to be said um and that's the whole point of the movie and if you're voting for it you're not that's what he's talking about i thought he did uh um a great job i thought it was a great speech it was probably the best uh speech of the night and you know from a guy who made like when i took my first film class we talked about karma police we talked about virtual insanity we talked about so many uh of his videos and i think um he's really a world-class director and see him do something at the top of his skills i have shot a review of this i have seen it uh by the way i know the reason not out so you might be confused but um i do i am really happy uh, that he won i mean it was obvious who was going to win but i think it's also really cool that he uh, stood up there and seemed very nervous and stood up for something and i think um and as a jewish man as well for to doing that i i really I, I think it was probably the greatest thing a director did uh that night uh yep i'm standing by that all right um moving on uh it was you know what? I think it was. I don't care if that shade. Uh, best original song. What was I made for? I guess. Um, sure, it should have been after I'm Just Ken. Come on. That's disappointing. Like, just, it would have been so much cooler if it was just I'm Just Ken. A couple of people brought up that The Fire Inside was the first song. Um, a time a movie based on a snack was performed at the Oscars. So that's a thing. Uh, uh,. Oh, it was uploaded to ABC, but not the Oscars. Thank you, TuneJ723, for clarifying that. Um, uh, no, thank you for thank you for that. Uh, funny thing that... <laughs> Bugs, so Bugs Bunny, Donald Duck, King Kong of Oscars, yet Diane Warren, Glenn Close, Bradley Cooper, and Amy Adams don't. You know what? If they were in Coyote vs. Acme, I'm sure... No. Um, so Best Original Song was this, was like I expected it, sure. Best Original Score, Ludwig uh, Gordonson, uh, good for him. I, it was an okay score. I think Robbie Robertson, who was his you know, posthumous nomination, he was obviously in the, ba the band, the band, and a great uh, musician, and I think it would have been nice for him to win. But whatever. Um, best anime in short, When to War is Over. Um, I didn't know that, uh, I didn't see it. Uh, that Peter Jackson and Weta were behind this, and there's been sort of some shade that it was sort of a toothless talk about peace and stuff like that. I don't know about that, but I know uh, we saw Sean Lennon go on stage uh, with the the people who made it. Um, he mentioned, you know, his mom Yoko. I I can't really say much about that. I and I you know I would have liked 95 Cents or Pachyderm was great too actually. Um, but uh, maybe if I if I have access to it or we all have access to it, maybe I'll review it. 
Um, but I am curious. It seemed like most people saw it were kind of disappointed by that. But um, uh, it was cool. Wes Anderson won, and that was Netflix's only one for live action short. Uh, they spent a lot of money on the Raoul Dahl rights, so I guess they get to win an Oscar by default. It was funny that Wes Anderson wasn't there, but apparently because he's starting shoot on his new movie today that happened today so he couldn't so his excuse was actually pretty good um i don't have much to say about documentary short it was cool they brought a kid up for documentary feature that was the, uh, about the ukraine i thought it was a good speech not as good as jonathan glazer's but it was very impactful and good so i will not be a j- jackass about that uh best adapted went to cord jefferson uh i probably retweeted this but if you you don't have to uh, adhere to my twitter like it's gospel uh but the last time a black uh man won a best screenplay oscar it was for precious which american fiction is very much making the it, the book american fiction is based on is very much making fun of the book precious by uh pushed by sapphire and stuff so um that was that's kind of funny how that worked out um i liked how Corey jefferson brought up that we should be making more smaller movies i agree but that was also uh Jeffrey Katzenberg's push when he became the head of Disney. So I don't know if it's like, it's like not the, not the greatest idea, but uh, I was like, I, I agree with him. There should be more smaller movies, but alas. Um, best original screenplay uh, went to Anatomy of Fall. Justin Triet uh, won. Uh, obviously, she was the only, well, the sole female directing nominee this time. Um, I would have gone with Past Lives for May, December over that. Um, or even the holdovers, despite the controversy that came up this weekend that maybe I'll talk about in a later, uh, stream. Um, but it was cool that they won, I guess. I, I wasn't really blown away by either of those screenplay wins. I think it would have been cooler if Barbie won adapted and Past Lives won original. I thought that would have been a cooler thing there. Past Lives kind of got shut out despite being a very small movie that did very well, actually. I think it didn't really get represented as well, especially for me being probably the best film nominated, but that's just my opinion. Uh, Best Supporting Actress, Divine Joy Randolph. Totally agree with that. I thought she was great. Um, You know, I don't really have much objection to that. Robert Downey Jr. and Oppenheimer. I think what's okay. What's weird about Robert Downey Jr. I want to bring this up actually is I liked Sam Rockwell doing mentioning Tropic Thunder. References like that were fine. But like, okay, I'm not being like a comic book guy here, but like, obviously he's famous for iron man right like that's like why when i tried to explain to my daughter who he was i was like well she's only seen homecoming and he was like oh he's in homecoming he was and she was like oh yeah i sort of remember that and like but like no mention of iron man it was like drug references and i was like that's weird like i don't know that was kind of one of the things that hit me it was like like i don't want you to bring it up all the time but like to have like i don't think there was any mention of it and it's like why bring up the drug stuff it's like i don't know i would have liked actually some Iron Man references. Anyway, I think you also should be nominated for the first um, Iron Man, but whatever. He's also the first cast member of SNL to ever win an Oscar. That's interesting. And in Living Color and Mad TV beat them to that. So that's kind of funny too. Um, uh, but um, I, I don't know. I think I think they could have done more with that. You know, I don't know. Um Okay, Sam Rockwell is a human Iron Man reference. That's true, Sam. That's true. But they could have. I just felt like if I apparently he did approve the drug joke, but it seemed like he was like trying to play along and be nice, but like wanted to. I don't know. I'm like, leave it alone. Like I, I feel like all the kids, the younger people who are watching, are like, wait, he was on drugs. Like I thought he was just Iron Man. Like it's like not even a thing. That's like that happened in the '90s. Like in the you know, it's like so long ago at this point. I just think. It wasn't worth bringing up. Uh, best actor and best actress were a bit of a surprise. Emma Stone, I did not see that. I think she was sort of the runner-up. Um, apparently, she was saying in the awards thing that uh, in the lead-up, like, I'm not going to win. It's going to be Lily Gladstone. Uh, she didn't. I think at Lily Gladstone, it, it felt too much like a coronation maybe for them, and I know they're getting to be less into the... Um, making big announcements with their wins and stuff like that. But I, I think that the real thing is, is, and it isn't a couple critics have brought up like the thing about lead and supporting. It's not how much runtime you have. It's your importance to the narrative. And she was a lead in terms of the narrative, not runtime wise. So if you ever want to get into that stupid, like category fraud bullshit. Um, and then they're like, well, she would have won in best supporting. And I'm like, I know what you're trying to do. It's basically like, 
the Oscars have this history of like minorities win more in supporting, and they're I I get what they're trying to kiddenly do and all that shit, but like I I think Lily Gladstone's performance was really great. Um, I didn't see Poor Things yet, so I don't really I don't want to shit on Emma Stone. I think it's just a lot of Oscars for someone that young. Um, I think Lily Gladstone's was more of like she's an indie actress. She's a Kelly Reichardt. Like really, that's why she got that role. That's how she was known before. Killers of Flower Moon, you can 100% tell she is someone from a Kelly Reichardt movie. Um, Kelly Reichardt movies are liked by, like, you know, Sight and Sound people and me, and, like, that's totally cool, but, like, for most of, most people don't know, I'm sure a lot of you don't know who she is and stuff, and that's not to be an insult or anything, but it's just, like, a different form of acting that's not as popular. So I sort of, like, in the end, I'm like, I guess that's probably what did her in. But I, I think that was, I was disappointed by that. Um, but we'll see. Maybe when I see poor things, I'll change my mind. But I thought it would have been a nice thing. Killers of Flower Moon got completely shut out as well. Uh, Kelly Murphy. I keep hearing that he was the first Irish guy to win Best Actor. Like, first guy born in Ireland. I don't know if that's true. But good for him regardless. I thought it should have been Giamatti. But I think Kelly Murphy's a good actor. So, um, we'll see. Uh, but we'll see. I don't know. I don't know. Um, Best director went to Chris Nolan. That was so expected. His speech was nice. It was good. Spielberg coming out was like, is this Scorsese or is this Nolan? Because it's not the other three. <laughs> it, was like, it was like, it's one of the two with him coming out. Um, I was like, yeah, where are we going? That was, that was interesting because I was like, whoa, what? And at first I think they said Best Picture. And I was like, before... I think it was before actress and director. I don't like it when they do that. They've done that a few times and it sucks. But it was, uh, anyway, it was best director. But it, it was a nice moment. I think Spielberg is sort of the odds on, like, director guy of this era. Like, you go, you know, people in the 50s would be like, oh, you're going to be the next Hitchcock. Now, for now, forever, it's going to be like, you're going to be the next Spielberg. I don't think Nolan's ever going to be that Spielberg like de facto director guy for most people but um you know I think he's wanted it for a long time and uh he wanted you know the one thing Kubrick never got but you know he'll never be Kubrick regardless of winning that but um I didn't know I think he uh sorry uh I think I would have liked it to have been Scorsese or Jonathan Glazer to be honest but I think he um you know it, he was the big movie star of the year almost I think it was his time and a lot of people's mine so whatever um uh morgan ray i agree with you and hello how's it going um best picture went to oppenheimer we all expected the pacino thing was weird some people thought zone of interest might sink in there i thought that was a be interesting but anyway um <laughs> oh dan brings up no one could stop looking at the oscar during his speech i get it but it was never not funny true all right um Overall, I was fine with, um, uh, I only remember Best Picture not being announced last once in 2021. What were the other times? I actually can't, I'm sorry, Senator, I can't remember. Maybe it was just 2021 because it just feels so off. It like fucks with you, doesn't it? It's like, it's like, that's not the order. That's not the order. I thought it happened another time, but maybe I'm wrong. Was it 2021? Wow. The pandemic. That's a weird, right after Parasite. Weird year. Weird year. Cheers to you, Sinram. Um, all right. Um, I mean, if you're watching this later, let me know in the comments what your favorite moment of the Oscars were. I think mine was Jonathan Glazer winning. And seeing, like, in, in all fairness, like, I know this, the main thing is Oppenheimer won seven. It's the first movie that has a billion dollars to win since Return of the King. It's the highest grossing one since uh the king speech jesus fucking shit um uh the <laughs> wow embarrassing but uh <laughs> this that whole thing uh but um it, it's cool to see a big movie win i think that's always good for the industry i think it would have been cool if you know barbie got a little more love there um i also think i noticed one thing while seeing clips and stuff there's a lot of times i saw famous people like in the auditorium that weren't featured and, like, certain things, like, I'm just Ken, like, the other Kens were there and ag apparently agreed to not be seen that much, actually. They, like, they knew their screen time was going to be, but still showed up, and props to them. But, um, because I thought that was actually, it was cool. At first, I was like, why aren't they showing them more? And then I heard that they were just, they just wanted to be there. And I was like, 
you know, respect. That's cool. But I saw like Riz Ahmed uh, hug Court Jefferson. I saw uh, like um, uh, Francis Pugh was like just showed up when Oppenheimer won Best Picture. I was like, she's in like the number one movie in the world right now. She's a huge star. Like, why the fuck? Why aren't we showing her more? Like, just like things like that was like they kept going to Gosling. They kept going. Like, I get some of these people are nominated, but like, can we just like show some of these like i don't know it's like you have all these famous people like i thought that was like one of the point of the fucking things like i don't know uh i also didn't know slash did the guitar part in uh, i'm just ken i know he does a lot of more session stuff than people realize but um that was interesting i didn't love it live i don't know i've gone back because i've watched so i'm just ken a few times and i go back and forth i will look up you know what sinram for you i will look up i'll put in the chat if other times that best picture has not been the last one because i feel like you gave a super chat and i deserve a better answer than that there was that one time i will actually look it up um but anyway um you know i just think it had some good moments they need to center it better and they need like a john mulaney really funny host because also it's like nobody watches the oscars for the host like seth mcfarlane proved that remember remember that academy so just like unless you're gonna get the rock or something but i also think like the other thing the john scene of the rock thing is interesting because the rock just looks like i do this shit for business basically and john cena looks like i'm gonna do this ridiculous thing because it's fun and i think that's it's nicer being seeing cena where he is i also forgot to mention the may december screenwriter i alluded to it and i want to say this before we get to questions um the may december writer also wrote coyote vs acme and she did comment that she believes things are still moving and it's not going to be put in a shelf forever on the red carpet um it's crazy that the person who wrote may december wrote coyote vs acme which makes me want to see it more if you see coyote <laughs> if you see may december that's fucking wild um all right i do think the muppets i think it was, i saw someone put john mulaney the muppets Ayo debris and tarantino i would go john mulaney conan o'brien the muppets Amber Ruffin, Seth Meyers would be my list. And I say Stephen Colbert should be in there too. I think Colbert is like an obvious pick, but if you wanted to do it, I think, and I think John Oliver would do a good job there. There's a shit ton of fucking people to, to do it. That would do a good job. Like I, I wouldn't mind Chris Rock, but it's like, he's done it. And it's like his, his time is sort of, you know, it's like, let's move on, you know? I, but I think any of those guys would be good. All right, I'm going to write questions. I do have Patreon questions. Questions. Well, hold on. Questions below. I'm sorry. I actually hurt. I hurt my arm. Not. I do have to lift things at work and stuff, but it was just because I stretched. just did a dumb, like, ooh, stretch, and I hurt my arm. That's honestly, it's really stupid. And then I was like, like i wanted to be like i lift this big thing and it, it's not it's like i anytime I, I hurt myself it's like the potentially like like one time i hurt my foot getting out of a car not sure how or i slipped in the shower and broke my toe i never have good never have good uh hurt myself stories really do i no i don't well i i did hurt myself on an axe once and i have you can't see anyway doesn't matter all right that's my cool one i hurt myself on the axe i was fighting a bear maybe not i wasn't fight. i just was dumb all right <laughs> patreon questions Sinram says i thought it would have been funny if arnold claimed that he was in the dark knight instead of the one he was actually in you know what he should have been bane so that's not i've read that even at the time so uh on on very early 90s internet Sinram, maybe you were the one who predicted that i i i thought that would have been funny too um the thane foga always gonna see austin's for last uh what's a film you're surprised it won as much as it did and what's a film you're surprised didn't win more um poor things i was surprised by and killers of flower moon i was surprised it didn't win more because that was such a great movie um but anyway he a scorsese movie hasn't won an oscar since hugo and a lot of people say scorsese doesn't win because uh he shows how evil like the america <laughs> as an evil black heart at its core and i'm like yeah it probably doesn't help uh austin although i guess oppenheimer did it but you know it made money so i guess that's the maybe that's it if scorsese movies made money also says hey jim what a great show and it's always i love the suit and tie and wine glass red bull cheers to you again austin uh my question what actor who plays a batman villain should have presented an oscar and second question sure al pacino gave the final word do you 
you think he should have done a whole Doug and Gino song similar to I'm just Ken to make up for getting peaches, for not getting peaches, even, even if it was Mario Day. Um, <laughs> what Batman villain should have presented? I mean, Nicholson. I already said that. Nicholson or... Um, well, I guess Killian Murphy was also there. Um, yeah, I'm going to say Nicholson. Or Michelle Pfeiffer, maybe. Um, I think it would have been... I mean, I think for you guys, it's Doug Cheeto, but even in my thing about Doug Cheeto, I was like, he's, like, a pretty big deal of an actor. <laughs> Some people bring up, like, he won for Set of a Woman, so why would he care, basically? I haven't seen Set of a Woman. The center I brought it up to me. I was like, maybe I should. Um, I, I think... Uh, it would have been fun if he went into the Duncan Chino meme once in a while. But ch- I'll I'll give it cheers because you mentioned the Red Bull wine, champagne glass, whatever. Any anyway, doesn't matter. All right, let's let's look at these. Jim Carrey. You know what? That would be a good. I think if Jim Carrey presented Best Picture, that would have been cool. All right. Um, John Stewart would be a good close, and I agree. Conan probably should have hosted a while ago. I agree question was talking about this in the discord when someone thought guardians of the galaxy 3 would win because it's marvel did you know mcu never won special effects spider-man 3 is the only marvel film period i have heard that it was like uh what was it like 13 nominations and visual effects i i'm gonna go out on a limb here and say it's because how they treat their visual effects artists that's 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 honestly what i think i i think that might be and because like all their films look the same. I hope if they do let different directors have different looks because the comics don't actually look the same. And that, anyway, uh, what do you think is the deal with Toho not releasing Godzilla minus one in Asia emblem T? I didn't know about that. Um, I don't know. Also like what's the deal with J- Japan not picking Godzilla minus one as their film for best international feature. That's another question. I would say, I don't understand that. Uh, why does the host, this is from the Wessonator, uh, who has a cool TikTok, by the way. Why does the host have to be a comedian every year? Why can't it be someone with more sophistication, like an Alex Trebek type? You know what? I'm not against that. I'm not, I'm really not. I wouldn't mind if it was Leonard Malton every year. Let's, uh, until he dies, it's Leonard Malton and his daughter. I would be down with that. And you know what? I 100% think they would too. They're nice people. Uh, I'll do Jordan Slaffalo and then I will get to Sid Rams, uh, very generous super chat. Jordan Slaffo, do you think Oppenheimer would have still ended up successful without the Barbenheimer meme? Yeah, no. Christopher Nolan, I've heard this theory. Christopher Nolan uh, is a huge deal, and he would have, yeah, he, he would have. It still would have been big. Maybe, I think the, the, them coming out together helped them both. But I, I, I don't think it, um, I still, Christopher Nolan's a huge star. So, um, oh, your center said Nicholson doesn't act anymore, so I don't think he'd come to the Oscars. He did for a while, though. He was like front row for so long. That's why I bring it up. But Pfeiffer was supposed to present with Pacino, but had to bow out at the last minute. What? What? So they're going to do a. Oh, man. They're going to do a Scarface thing, and then they claim to do a. Then they said it was for Godfather 2. Fuck them. Scott, that would have been cool. See, this is going back to my 80s thing. Ah, well. You know what? They could have said Dog Day Afternoon. I don't know if that's an anniversary, but it's a cool movie. He could have yelled Attica. How cool is that? Anyway, he could have said Attica. Anyway, you know what? I've noticed how no one brought up the Pacino Insomnia thing. I didn't even think about it till later. Like, Pacino was in a Christopher Nolan movie. I, I don't know. I feel like I said this before, but I do feel like Christopher Nolan is probably like this fucking guy. Jesus. Uh, everyone told me Williams would be the problem, but this fucking asshole. Anyway. Cheers to you, Sinram. I just, it's just because Nicholson used to, and Sinram, well, I know you know this, used to be synonymous with the Oscars, but cheers to you, sir. All right, I would like to do everybody's super, uh, I want to do as many questions as I can, just because I like you guys, and you guys are always nice, and let's do it. Um, Let's see how far we can get. Question, did you see the tweet of uh, Takashi Yamazaki, I think, and Adam Wingard uh, together. And Friday there will be a video of them talk, talking with each other. Oh, cool. No, I didn't, but I like that idea. That's cool. Let me know when that comes out. Question. Favorite non-verbal reaction, Spielberg or Michael Keaton? Uh, wow. Um, I like the Spielberg one. I actually didn't hear the Spielberg one when it happened. 
Keaton one was great. They planned that very, they planned both very well. And it were, I thought those were like some of the more fun, like let's use natural charisma, but it is funny. More people like Keaton in that than in the flash, which I was like, Oh fuck. <laughs> That's true though. That's true. Uh, cornbread. Why didn't they make the little Godzilla talk fight when they got on stage? <laughs> It's like something my kids would ask me. <laughs> because Godzilla doesn't fight Godzilla. That's why. Mothra wasn't on stage. Let's be serious, Cornbread. Jesus. Jesus. I can't believe you. All right. No, I'm sorry. That's stupid. But I don't know why. They should have done that. Uh, good night, Al Vasquez. Um, oh, man. I don't know why. What is up with... Okay. I don't understand why the scroll in my chat never works well. Okay. Woody, the Woody Woodpecker song. This is from Tune J73. The Woody Woodpecker song was nominated for Best Original Song 94A despite not being from a feature length film. What other shorts do you think should be nominated outside the shorts category? Well, The Red Balloon won a Best Screenplay. Um, so that, that I agree with because that's actually, if you've never seen The Red Balloon, I might do a review of it at one point. I've been threatening forever. But that, that's a great, like, if you want to learn film stuff, that's a great one. Um, there's a, I would say that one, I would actually say Gerald McBoing Boing deserves a production design. Uh, I would say, um, I would give some Looney Tunes ones production design. I would give some more animated ones production design. I would actually, I'm not sort of joking about the Spider-Verse one. I made a joke about that winning best editing. But seriously, like, having all those styles meshed together, I think it actually should get a best editing. And um, I actually think some, you know, Hayao Miyazaki should have gotten a Best Director thing. Probably should have been in there instead of, uh... Not sure, but one of them. <laughs> Somebody can go. I think stuff like that would be cool. But that's a good question, 2 g 73 Nathaniel Fogo, think, of, think Beyond the Spider-Verse is safe from losing Best Animated Picture when it comes out. I don't know what the competition is. So it's like, I don't even want to say that. I think it if it keeps up the quality, sure, but like... What if Disney actually makes a good movie again? <laughs> Sorry, ouch. Um, what, do you, what do you think that Neil Brewer, the VFX guy, feel for losing three times that night? I don't want to comment on Twitter because his son came after me, so I don't want to say anything. I hope he feels okay. But apparently, like him and his friend were like, you know, you're just jealous because he has so many Oscars and nominated. And he does, and he's very successful. I just think it's funny. Like, like the, like literally you're nominated three times in one thing. Like it, that's, that's insane, but good for him in general. I'm sorry. I was being so stupid. Uh, cornbread is I really have no hate for him at all. And I thought the visual effects in the creator, when two of the movies he was nominated for, I think the creator mission possible were incredible. I forget what the third one was, but like the fact that he had that much work that I'm like, this one was incredible. That was incredible. And you know, another one like that's fucking nuts. That guy deserves some credit. I'm sorry to be a little stupid about it, but he's fine. Don't worry. Um, is Scorsese, uh, not winning the same reason why Jordan Peele? Nope. Ain't getting any noms at all. Scared to give someone on stage to say, they scared to get someone on stage to say the truth. LOL. Um, I think it's, I think it's that. And, um, I'm going to be honest. I don't think the Academy does well with difficult movies. I think they do well with some difficult movies, but I think like they can't, they're not really the kind of people who will go for that many. So, um, the Western here, any super early predictions for next year's Oscars, stuff like Dune 2, Megalopolis, Joker 2, or Sasquatch Sunset. I don't know about Sasquatch Sunset, but Dune 2, I think we'll get a lot of people were saying Godzilla only got it because Dune Part 2 got pushed back to this year. I, I, I mean, maybe. I think it, it, I don't, off the top of my head, can't remember all the things that are coming out in this year. I think Dune 2 will at least get a nomination. I think Joker 2 has a good chance at a nomination. Uh, Megalopolis, I think, um, that, it would be cool to see Coppola get kind of in there for like one final awards thing, I think would be nice, but we'll see. That one's super risky. Nathaniel Fogo, if the Mario movie did have a chance to get nominations, which would you think it could have won in? I don't think it would have won. I think it could have gotten nominated for... A lot of people brought up maybe it should have gotten Best Anime Feature because it was such a big hit and meant so much and changed so much for you know, video games and stuff like that, but I think... Um, uh, I think... Um, I th yeah, I don't know. I think best song, it would have been nice to see him do that. Um, Jesus, this YouTube. Why is it not scrolling? 
Uh, oh, thank you, Abby Ramey, uh, by the way. And no problem for the TikTok. I saw uh, no problem for the Western Ear thing. Uh, do you consider this the... What do you consider the funniest Oscars moment? It still when Seth MacFarlane made that Sound of Music joke. I love that. Okay, I can't scroll up, so anyone before that, I apologize. Um, Cornbread says, if Jimmy Kimmel's Transformer joke... <coughs> Sorry. Uh, not actually throwing writers under the bus after the strike. <coughs> oh, boy. Okay. Sorry. That's embarrassing. Okay. Um, not, but instead a really funny joke about them being robots. Um... I actually didn't like that because I liked that one more than usual. So I thought that sucked. Um, sorry, question. Did Jimmy Kimmel come off as spiteful with some of his jokes to you? Or is that just me? He seemed a little like sort of over it, to be honest with you. I thought that was sort of annoying. Um, okay. What is going on with the YouTubes tonight? I can't scroll for shit. Uh, thank you for the bless you things. All right. Um, can you look at, can you look up Gooning Lunt? No, I'll, maybe a different one. Uh, question. I like movies, but don't care about the people in the credits. Is that just my preference or could I do a performance in a while? I would say look into some of it. You'd be surprised how much you can learn from that. That's a, it, I've never heard that one before. Um, sorry, Zane Powers, that you're late. I'm going a little long, so I'm surprised. Uh, do you think we'll ever see Angris in a new Godzilla again? I think Angris is not as popular as people think it is. If Jeff Goldblum isn't real from Corporate, then who's been flickering the lights? I don't know. That's funny. Um, uh, I want to see... Uh, question... Did I get them all? I, I'm a little lost. Anyway, uh, worst thing about this year's Oscars, in memoriam, maybe... Uh, will you ever be hosting an award show? Probably not. I don't think they ask people like me to do that. Um, I just don't understand why it, anyway, I think Mutant Mayhem also should have been nominated. I heard a lot of that. Uh, did anyone say something worth a Smith slap this year? Uh, maybe anytime anyone says, uh, um, something about animation being for kids. That would be cool if, like, Bugs Bunny came on and slapped him. I also was like, you know, if we're going to do the actors, the five actors thing, it'd be cool if they had, like, animated characters from other things. Like, you had, like, you know, Totoro give Miyazaki and, I don't know, that'd be cool. Anyway, I think that's about it. I think we're done for tonight. I'm not sure if there'll be another stream this week. I will let you know. Follow me on social media for that. Uh, most embarrassing except for not winning an Oscar. I don't think there has been an embarrassing one. Anyway. Anyway, that is it. I'm sorry. Um, um, no, I'm not saying... I don't. I like Angris. He's just like... When you ask people, he's never their second favorite. Yeah, maybe I'm wrong about this. But anyway. Um, Alright, I should go. Uh, thank you all for being here for my Oscars reactions. Thank you uh, for the generosity of the, the Super Chats. Let's take a, a final swig of the champagne glass. Let's get a shot of the champagne glass in there uh, for this special, wonderful night. Um, um, oh, thank you, Abe Ramey. Um, and thank you for just being here and being cool. I oh, yeah, I hope you like the Oscar um, uh, uh, little Oscar facts video. That was a fun video to make. Cheers to all of you. Let's hold on. Let me see. If, whoa, not as... Been out for an hour, not as sparkly. All right. We have definitely gone long. Thank you all very much for being here. Thank you for watching. Thank you for watching the other videos. I will see you all next time. I'm not sure if there will be a video tomorrow, but I'll see you uh, whenever the next thing is. And y'all have a good night. Thank you for watching. I hope you had a ha fabulous Oscar season. I will see you next time in this wonderful... Well, I should show off the, the tux a little. Wonderful tux there. Th thank you to everyone. I will show Ace the Wind Rider's gif on the next stream. Sorry, there was no break this time. But anyway, but you should check out his links below. Regardless, there is a new one. I think it's in the Discord if you want to see it. Anyway, thank you all very much. Thank you for being here. Have a good night. And uh, subscribe if you would like to. See you next time.